groups, make them aware of it. And yeah, no, they, that's uh, perfect. And and we can we can trim it down and just however in whatever format you want, mate. So that's no problem. So yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. It's pretty easy. Well, I guess I guess one of the first things is before we kind of jump into this, it's important to get clarity around the lens in which we analyze um, your game. So what yep. I'd like to do first is to get um, an understanding, am I correct in my assumptions? <laughs> so um, yeah. my understanding is that you're currently not playing a, a lot of golf. You, you've okay. got limited time to practice. You're, you're a busy guy and you've got Q school in a few months. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sweet. And then you've got, so you, you're looking to ensure that any time that you invest in your game is focused on A, the right areas and that it's optimizing yeah. so you're using your time efficiently. Would I yeah. be correct in I'm that? Pretty, yeah, and you're probably going to say driver as well, but there is, <laughs> but there'll be other areas too. Yeah, mate, and, Redu and the, reduce penalty shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's we, we, we've <laughs> taken a bit of a dive, so that's awesome that that we've um, that we're clear on on what the objective is. Yeah. And again, this is this is really a discussion as well. So yeah, what we like to do is kind of show some insights. You know, we are sitting halfway across the world looking at numbers and stuff. Yeah. So. If there's anything that um, I've misinterpreted or misunderstood, just shout out because then we can modify it. Yeah. And one, I, yeah. I think one of the key benefits of, of this is a, um, you know, we get to support and understand your game a little bit better, but we can also share this with your coach or you can share it with your coach because we've yeah, created yeah. a discussion document that that's, yeah. it's yours, do with it what you will. Um, what yeah. I might do, mate, um, sorry, is there anything else that, that I need to be aware of or conscious of? No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background to, to what I felt my game has been, if you want, yeah. from when I played on tour years ago. Um, so I always thought I, dr I always drove the ball quite well. I always, I, I, I'll give you an idea. So once in Denmark at a tour event, I led greens and fairways and missed the cut. So <laughs> for two yeah. rounds. Um, but in, in general, my game was always. Drove it pretty well. Um, iron play was pretty decent. Chipped all right. Putted very average. Always, my rounds typically look like um, three birdies, one bogey, nothing else. Never really shot lights out, but never really shot level powers like the worst it normally kind of was, really. So when I got from Challenge Show to Main, so I kind of got a, the benefit of driving the ball pretty well, I always said. Um, but then, like, when I lost my card, I was messing around with driver quite a bit and started hitting it bad again. Um, and coming back to it now, I haven't drove the ball very well. So it's certainly an area what I've been trying to to improve. Um, and in my head, I am players always feels okay. I just need to drive it better and put better. Which <laughs> that's that's my kind of take, <laughs> really. Mate, it's pretty... <laughs> it, there's there's so much good stuff going on though. Like as we started diving. Yeah. There's there's some epic opportunity, and there's some yeah. really low hanging fruit in our view as well. So I'm, I'm just I'm really excited, um, to kind of take yeah. a dive. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll share my screen. Yeah, I, I totally appreciate the golf courses I've been playing currently are nowhere near like <laughs> the average male PGA Tour player course. Um, yeah. I've, I've played some pretty average golf courses and play pro-ams in relaxed formats um, mm. I've played a bit of Euro pro around some better golf courses yeah. uh, I've played a few, a few of the 2020 pro tour events around some okay courses but I'm certainly not um, they're not as challenging as I know that I know they, they are yeah absolutely and and I guess that that's some of the um, like some of the considerations that we we are looking at so so this is this is effectively a discussion document which we'll work through in just a second um, so yeah. one of the conditions is a it is when we're looking at this it's, it's a relatively small sample size right so we are looking at um 10 yeah. so the time period we're looking at is the 6th of may through to the 30th 31st of july <clears throat> the rule of thumb which you've quite rightly brought up is there's about a 3.2 strokes gain difference between you know the pj tour courses and the courses you may be playing on and there are different levels yeah. of quality it's just something that we do need to be considerate of um, yeah. What we've done though, 
to kind of uh, help with that, we've kind of benchmarked you. So what does success look like? If we looked at world top 35 and use that as an initial benchmark, in our view, yep. even if you're playing um, on some, you know, not necessarily lesser standard, but maybe some easier setup courses, that's a good way to almost handicap it for you so that when you, okay. you're achieving at world top um, 35, you're going to have a high, high chance of being successful either in qualifying yeah, and sure. in a tour card. Um, so just, just in our view. Um, but before we jump into that, um, would this be a fair representation of what you would be seeing over those last 10 yeah. rounds, just at a high level? Yeah, I would, I would, I would say drive has got better or felt better. But I guess you get so emotionally attached to bad tee shots, don't you? So you kind of, and then like my, my last, my last round of Europe, I had my first two tee shots in the trouble and lost them both. So it kind of <laughs> killed me a little bit. But in, gen but in general, uh, driver does feel like it's, feels like it's trending mm. in the right direction. Um, it is. Yeah, put, it, put in, excluding yeah. that last round. <laughs> so you yeah. are moving in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and I do think, remember, it, it is a small sample size. So, you know, a yeah. bad round could have and does have a significant impact in the overall result. Um, one of the cool things that we're seeing is that, you know, there's some significant improvement happening in three of the four key areas. So, yeah. I mean, the, the key thing, sometimes a negative strokes gain isn't necessarily a bad thing. What we're looking for is improvement over time in key areas that have the largest overall impact yeah. in helping you achieve your goal. And and the lens in yeah. which we look at this on is what's the what's the least amount of time you need to spend on your game to achieve success, right? Yeah, so, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, and you're, you're yeah. a busy man, but with, with that being the case, you that's a fair representation, right? You're comfortable. Nothing's out of the ordinary. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, when I see that, yeah, that sort of the di uh, diamond, yeah, definitely. Perfect. So. Um, when we look at it, so if we look at it from the lens of that kind of world top 35, uh, we're losing about uh, 2.1 strokes per round relative to that benchmark. And I think that's a great benchmark to use because of the type of course you're playing domestically. Um, yeah. There's some awesome stuff. And if you look at your approach game, so from outside of 100 yards, you're gaining almost a stroke per round to world yeah. top 35. It's, it's unbelievable. And we'll take a bit of a deep right. look that in a minute. Um, you're gaining 0.88 of a stroke. Yeah. Um, unbelievable, man. Um, where yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, and yeah, please stop me. Um, I'll kind of run through it as well. Just stop me at any point in time. So sometimes just keep going, but yeah, please pull me up. Um, cool. Where we're losing strokes. Um, so we've got drives. We're losing 2.42 strokes um, relative to yeah. 35. Um, inside of 100, we're losing 0 0.21 and we're losing yep. 0 0.26 in putting versus world top 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the great news is that if you look at, um, we've potentially got 2.55 strokes that we can improve, right? So we can bridge this gap. We can more than bridge this gap here by improving in three areas just to tour average. Right, so not okay. not getting to world top thirty five, so you can bridge and overachieve to world top thirty five just by improving in three areas to tour average. Yeah. So, so the lens in which we apply to this is that. So let's say um, you've you've got players that you you're kind of talking with that want to that want to turn pro, right? They haven't been professional yeah. before. The lens in which we would look on is we would generally bench the mark them against depending on the course they're playing on. It might be um, pro ready. And if we're looking at pro ready as the overall goal, we would look at are there any areas of the game where they're underperforming to scratch? And we would look at those yeah. lower hanging fruits because, you know, in my view, to be successful at a tour level, there would be no area of the game where you'd be underperforming to scratch. So okay. that's the kind of lens there. Um, let's go through strengths first. So from 100 to 150, you're gaining 0 0.37 strokes per round. It is unbelievable. Okay. Um, so yeah, okay. higher on green percentage, <laughs> higher on green percentage, closer proximity to tour average. So, for example, from 125 to 150, you've yeah. got 18.55 percent on green percentage. You're at 89 percent versus their 70, uh -huh. and you're hitting it closer by almost three feet. Yeah. So yeah. it's absolutely. I say it's not a massive. Well, it's not a massive spread, but I actually would have quite a lot of them shots, wouldn't I, over ten rounds? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's it's very, very impressive what you're doing there. Yeah, and, cool. You know, nice. With any of these as well. So if you ever want to start looking at, you know, how many strokes somebody's having in a particular area of the game, we've got a per shot. So strokes gains are really interesting. Um way to analyze right but it is a, an accumulation of the amount of shots you have so so one of the cool things that we do is let's say through here so from 100 to 150 you're gaining that much over the course of a round so if we look at if we go into a detailed view what you've got on there so you can see how the per shots you're every single time you hit that golf shot you're gaining um 0 0.05 of a stroke Right. Yep. So I'll tell you how many shots you have. So you have, you have about four and a half strokes per round. Okay. Oh, sorry, seven, seven point yeah. four strokes per round. Seven and a half. Okay. So from that distance, so there's there's a high volume of shots you're having in that space. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um. Now, short game. You're gaining from twenty one to sixty. You're gaining point. 2-2 of a stroke per round to tour average. Again, awesome. Very similar, mate. Higher on green percentage versus tour average yeah. um, from under 75 yards. So you're at 92% on yeah. green percentage from under 75, which is epic. So that's, you know, almost well, four and a half percent higher. Um, while yeah. that, that, that's, prob yards. that's probably that, that's probably one of the surprising stats, really. I didn't actually think oh, it's they might have it a couple of really close ones or something, but didn't think that would be a, a positive. Hundred <laughs> percent. There, there is so many. Yeah. In my view, there's there's a couple of levels on here. Is one we were looking at. What would be the areas of your game which would, um, you know, help you be successful when you go to Q school, but also win more events. And so we've kind of yeah. taken two lenses on this. And so as we now start working into um, these possible development areas, these are not only the areas in which we suggest um, you might want to focus on, but also, you know, you super, you, you exceed these, they're your winning formula, you know, because yeah. you've got, you're so strong in a particular, in particular areas of your game that, you know, you start driving it, you know, better. And we'll talk about what, what does better mean in a second start holding a few more parts and then you scramble better and it's more the scrambling percentage so generally in our view because your approach game is so strong you're generally yeah. going to seek a bit right so you're going to be like dead aiming half the time at flags which would mean there's a potential opportunity that in some instances you may short side yourself yeah and in yeah. my view in our view when we're analyzing this this is we keep suggesting go for it man like keep in sync yeah. because you're so strong in that area. However, if you do miss, we 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 do need to recognize that you're probably going to short side yourself. So, um, you know, that's why you'll see in here, we've got in short game under 20, which doesn't have a huge like impact right now. It's more around yeah. it's only 0 0.06 of a stroke per round. But, you know, as you're playing in competitive events, we want to ensure that A, you're making cuts. And not yeah. just making cuts, but having opportunity to win. So that, in our view, would be one of those kind of key levers that you might want to pull, or at least be, um, at least recognise. So to your point, where are there opportunities? So drives. So you're losing um, yeah. just over two strokes per round. Um, similar fairway hit percentage versus to average. However, you know, twenty-two yeah. um, shorter. Um, look. Again, small sample size. This is going to be hyper course dependent. I'd take some of this too with a grain of salt because there are going to be scenarios where you may hit three wood off the tee. There are going to be scenarios yeah. hybrid that will have an effect on um, your driving distance total. Um, however, that won't necessarily affect the, the, the strokes gain value for what we're just about to talk about because it's more around the severity of the misses. So to your point before, um, yeah. it's yes, there's some distance, uh, discrepancies there so we're about 22 yards shorter however it's when you do miss a fairway even though you're hitting more fairways there are highly penal misses so over the last kind of two rounds we've got 13 recovery lies and five penalty strokes and that's the point that's really killing yeah, the, yeah. the number i don't it's you know is there an opportunity to maybe you know yes increase average drive distance by six yards 
but it's, it's the avoidance of those penalties and the recovery lies. So potentially make taking some more conservative lines on specific holes. Um, again, it, you know, what, it, it, but it was, it, I only say it, it's hundred percent a, a, a technical thing. I like, I haven't, I haven't technically been in a good place with it. I've been using a driver, which I think didn't help me either. Um, so I'm making some changes technique wise and I've gone back to a, what I knew as an old, an old driver, old shaft, old head and, like straight away, it feels miles better. Um, I, 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 I totally changed my miss from what was the normal miss. Um, and then you're just kind of guessing out on the tee and you've got two misses going on or you've got a totally different bad miss. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe that's on a on a upward trend just from doing that really as well. It, it, it's really interesting, right, because... The, the way in which I think kind of the next progression on here is that, yes, we, we now we've got a couple of key data points, right? So we know how you're performing on the golf course and we know what does success look like and we know how big that gap is. I think now yeah. it's going to become really helpful and especially from um, a perspective of a, you know, technical versus execution. Now the, the points that we need is how, what's the skill level? What's the underlying skill level? in a controlled environment. So for example, when you're practicing, what is that? Because that then gives us an indication of how far away, is it far away? Yeah. We don't know yet. So if we look on your on your dashboard, so the way we make this work now, so you click on log practice. So, so the way this is effectively done, once we've analyzed where we wanna go, do you see on here now, You've got, so it's actually come up with those focus areas. Yeah. So what we're looking for right now is we're looking to be able to help you and, and ensure that any time that you spend is in the right area, because sometimes to help players, I'm not saying this is the case with you, but you may be overperforming in training than you do on the golf course, which is sometimes the case. Yeah. Um, if it is, how much, Right. Because is it being able to execute it from a skill perspective on the golf course? Is it purely the underlying skill? And this gives us a real good indication. So, for example, what we'll be looking for is there are two parts to it. One is, you know, the miss. So we'd be looking at potentially even going on the golf course with you. Or if you go onto the golf course, use this one here. So yeah. five golf balls on a par four or par five. Remove the two best, remove the two best, measure the median, and you essentially, to the closest edge of the fairway, we want to figure out how far you are away from that edge. So the closer you are, the worse you are, right? So we want to get you as far away from the edge of the fairway as possible. So let's say you are five yards away. Or if you've got a track man or a flight scope or a GC quad, whatever those things might be, to be able to go, right, well, what does what's the dispersion we're looking for with driver? So for you, we're looking at 11 yards. Now... From a distance perspective, what would be really helpful um, to start looking at is when you're when you're playing, when you're practicing, you know, what's the goal? So do we have a goal through here? So we've got a goal in here now. And to achieve that, we I, we first of all need to start looking at what what's your club head speed. So let's say oh, I'm just making stuff up here, but let's pretend it was that, right? So now we're going wall. Yeah. If that's the club head speed, we can't achieve that. But yeah, if, you, yeah. if you come in here. I'm like 115. Swing speed. Perfect. You know yeah. So if you're at 115, right? Yeah. And then this is at 250. And these are yards. There's probably a discrepancy going on at impact. And then you can start talking about that skill level. So you're talking smash factor, you know, impact location. Yeah. Attack, those types of things. But it, it becomes really clear. And you can it's yeah. a it's a uh, an elimination process so it becomes quite fun but that'd be one of the cool things that we suggest you might want to explore as a next stage with you know driving so what's yeah in i'd put I'm, I'm not massively like i say I'm, my time frame is quite small so in terms of chasing the, the distance i wouldn't say is a uh, a big thing but i certainly know that the driver i had before was was spinning way too much mm. and I was probably not swinging at my speed just through sheer, not wanting to hit it offline as well. 100%. So I think, yeah, and I think like all of a sudden I've gone back to an old drive where I know it doesn't spin and I can hit quite hard and it just feels a totally different scenario. So, yeah, like I said, I'm on, I've, I played the last event and my, my distance is 
in the company I've been in and that standard is pretty pretty average to all right. Yep. Certainly not a lot certainly not long, but yeah, it's like you say, it's a small, a small sample of numbers as well, isn't it, really? So hundred percent. It just becomes also really empowering, right? To be able to go, Chris, do you actually realize like in training like the capability and the skill levels there? So it kind of mm. builds into that confidence. So if you're coming in, so those these goals through here, these are effectively kind of not for driving distance, but this is about you know three to four percent or three percent yeah. uh harder or longer than what you're doing on the golf course. So what it starts doing is it starts being able to show you how how good you are and, and the underlying level there. So it's more to help you with confidence, knowing how good you are, because it's incredible, man. Like being able to show yeah. people that you can achieve these things is, is half the battle. And a lot of the time without measuring, we all have cognitive bias, right? So there's always stuff that we're so focused on driving. Like for example, for you, you might be hyper-focused on that. This might only be a couple of shots, you know, around yeah, yeah. Kind of getting you. So if we can build that confidence up by showing you you're great in training, it might be helpful. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I, I've put it down to a driving for me. Like my time practice wise has been quite limited. So it has pretty much just been hitting some irons really. Like yeah. and not even not even getting through to the bag to driver at some points. And I think um I was saying some. I did hit some drivers yesterday, and I said to my coach, "Like, my like my numbers on trap on flight scope, my path and face are very very good, but I just don't think I've got enough reps in to hit mm. the middle of the face like I used to do. And I think I'm just very good at missing the middle at the moment. <laughs> so yeah. the the ball's not doing what it should do when it does it in the middle. And I, and I just said to him, I I just do I just need to hit balls. That's my kind of take on driver okay. like it's not in a bad place i just need to hit loads of balls yep. and loads of balls on the golf course in in competition 100 percent, mate and and one of the cool things that we can then check is just how is that improvement going over time right so mm -hmm. um all we will then be looking for is as you start kind of playing a little bit more if you do end up practicing again the, the practice stuff is just five balls so the intention there is to just be hyper focused, you know, to your point, one of the first things yeah. to look at is, are you spending time in the, in that area? And the answer is yes or no. Right. So how could you be good at a specific skill if you're not investing the appropriate time in there? And I think it's yeah, yeah. When you and your coach, what appropriate time looks like, but all we're looking for mate, is, is this number here green? That's all you're looking for. Is it, is it green? Yeah. Is it moving up? If it is, congratulations, yeah. give yourself a pat on the back. Cause that's epic. That's all we can ask from anyone and all anyone yeah. can ask from themselves in my view. But there's some low-hanging fruit there because those recovery, each recovery is probably costing you like 0 0.7, 0 0.72 of a stroke, yeah. probably 0 0.73. Yeah. So it's just hammering it. So even if you remove those, I mean, it's pretty close then. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure, like, yeah. You're not yeah. that far away. Cool. Then where, where it got really interesting with putting, so under seven feet, you're losing 0.4 of a stroke per round. It was yeah. pretty cool though. So you've got a similar make rate from under five feet versus tour average. So to yeah. us, that kind of indicates that you've clearly got the ability to start the ball online because it's almost impossible to have a 96.39% make rate from under five feet without being able to start the ball online. However, cool. yeah. you know, there's a 7.14% percent fewer make rate percentage from five to ten feet which is kind of those you know you, you sometimes yeah. conversion birdie conversion numbers especially with how good your approach game is that yeah could swing it so you're probably adding one to two more birdies around if you can kind of start maybe matching speed um to slope and that could just yeah. be again it could just be reps it could be adaptability when you are going to the golf course to be able to adapt to speed <laughs> and the conditions faster yeah, yeah, yeah. um but that's a really low hanging fruit in our view. That's, you know, almost two strokes. You could probably get to, if you kind of six, um, exceed that, it's probably two strokes in event, yeah. a four round event, which is quite cool. Um, yeah. And short game um, from under 20. So you do hit it, um, you know, you're at 1.95, uh, almost two feet closer in proximity from under 10 yards, which is epic, mate. However, yeah. Um, the proximity is a little bit wider and it's only a small amount wider from rough lines. So there's a potential opportunity to improve um, your uh, short range approach shots from rough lines. 
Yeah, um, I've just wrote I've just wrote it down because again, like the time is quite limited. There's a bit of pitching off a mat at the range. There's a bit of chipping in lessons and around the fringe, but I just don't spend enough and, and it's speed. Like I think as soon as you get into rough or a bad lie, for me it was always I was quite I was always pretty good at it. Hmm. Good loft, good bounce, good speed. And you just lose that speed. If you don't I think if you don't get the reps and you don't do it in practice and you just get a bit quitty on it or a bit like you just don't commit to it, then you start good shots. And for me it's all about the speed. And I think again it's just that I probably need to be a bit more disciplined in throwing balls down and just playing them and not pulling them onto a nice lie like in a demo and hitting a few <laughs> nice, 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 easy shots sort of thing. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, it's, it, it's, but it's nice to see it on paper to then go, you know what, yeah, you, it feels like that and that says it's like that. So, yeah, you need to go and do something about it now, really. And and in my view, mate, these are really small, minute. Again, yes, is, is there applied focus in that area? I, I think, too, one of the things that would suggest happens is it's sometimes not and it may be different for your driving but sometimes especially for the short range shots and, and putting for example it's not necessarily a, so many reps it's the applied focus with an area and that's where for like here yeah. like we start going on so you've got you know from the rough for example through here focus area again some of it's just five golf balls like throw the five yeah. balls in and then from there like assess it so you may go let's say you're at 10 feet Right, so you're worse than your your goal through here. Absolutely, potentially stay and then apply some practice. But if you came in here and you're at six feet, go and do something else, mate. Like, yeah. um, and then I think if you did that, because that, again, if you're at six feet and so you're beating your goal again, this is ten percent harder now from these dispersions than what you're currently doing on the golf course. And yeah. then over time, like even if it's you know a couple of times a week, you might be doing five balls and they're each getting better, and then you go and play this number's changing, you're able to know that you are spending time on it. Your coach can also see that you've practiced it and how you're performing in it, which is yeah. quite cool. If you look at your putting from, you know, 7 to 11 feet, these are just 10 ball tests. So your objective success right now looks like 5 out of 10. So if okay. you throw um, yeah. 10 balls, variable putts, so across different breaks, yeah, full process, full routine. You know, if you get 6, Good job, man. Do something else. Hundred percent. And so, yeah, because your your time is so limited. This is what this yeah. is trying. So any any uh, practice goal there with focus. If you were limited on time, this is where we'd suggest you practice. So you see, like there is literally nothing yeah. going on in those approach shots. <laughs> yeah, you've got a couple. You've got a few through here, and again, five ball test, mate. And I I think the objective would be. If you exceed the task in practice with those five balls, go and do something else. So you're not investing a huge amount yeah. of time. But sometimes you can also, you know, pull yourself out of performance. And so what it does from a uh, like a confidence perspective, a self-esteem perspective, and a behavioral perspective is you're actually going A to the range with clarity and focus. You know you've practiced. So when you leave the range, you've practiced the things you know that's going to help you the most, and you've yeah. succeeded. So you're walking off, you're lying in bed going, that was awesome today, man. I practiced four errors and all four were above. That's cool. Yeah. Kind of get it to a point where you can do that in half an hour. Like once you get your skill yeah. to the point where you want it to, you're like bang, done. And then you can kind of do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Is, but that would be um, that would be my suggestion. But is there anything on here, mate, cool. that I've misunderstood or misinterpreted? No, I don't think so. No, it sounds great. I think... Um... I like say it's good to see it on paper. Um, I guess like the big, I think the biggest. Like, I, I knew my, I knew my approach play was pretty good because when I've logged the stats and that little sort of diamond comes up, it's always yeah. gone a little bit towards <laughs> the approach play. Um, short game from twenty-one to sixty. I don't know how many shots are in that in that region, but I didn't really expect that to be a strong point. Um, Continue yeah. yeah it, it, yeah, mate. There's some. There's there's seriously. There's some incredible. Like you're so good in so many areas. There's a couple of small minor tweaks. That's all it yeah. is. It's there's just a couple. Yeah, 
Yeah, so from a skill perspective, you're gaining yeah. every single time you're hitting a shot, you're gaining, you know, one. So, yeah, you've kind yeah. of got two shots, two shots around. Yeah. yeah, but the skill level is so high. So you see through here, like, the proximity is high, green percentage, so you're hitting more greens and you're hitting it really close. Like, yeah. It's phenomenal, mate. And these these three here, so so your scramble percentage is only down because of... He missed the pot. Right? Yeah. He missed so the pot, yeah. You've got it, mate. And so, and that's where we've kind of linked that back into, you know, the short range parts. So in my view, yeah, what we do by focusing on this, you know you're incredible from your approach game, right? So drive it well, mm -hmm. put you in a position to have those approaches. You kind of pin seat, go nuts at it. You're probably going to have a few more putts from five to ten foot. Where if we can convert one or two more of those around, it's it's a game changer. And then if you yeah. do miss a green and you're short sighted because you've potentially, especially if you you know you go to Q school now, get on tour, the yeah. rough's generally a little bit higher <laughs> than than what you might be playing on domestically now. And you're going to be able to save, so your scramble percentage is going to be better. Therefore, you're saving par. You're not dropping shots, but you're also converting. And I think it would just flip. So you're either going to win out or you're going to make more cuts. Yeah, yeah sure. Cool. Um, what I'll do, mate, uh, if it's right with you, I'll, I'll send this through to you. And then you, if you want to share it with your coach, go for gold, man. Yeah. I'll send this through. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Happy? We'll do. So, yeah, so when I sign on to the, um, onto the system again, so all in focus things are there for me to, to click on and try out there. Absolutely. And then if you want yeah. to, you've got a link to my calendar as well, I think. So at any point in time, especially once we're getting a few of those, maybe in a, a couple yeah. of weeks, why don't we jump on another call? We can review it just yeah. to check and answer any questions you've got. Let, let's get you yeah, yeah. ready for Q school, man. This will be fun. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. awesome. I think I've got, um, I'm, I'm playing Sunday, but it's in one of our 2020 events. So Sweet. it either goes quite well or quite bad, depending on how I start because of the focus of trying to run the event. Um, yeah, so and then I'm going to play Euro Pro first week in September up in Scotland. Uh, awesome. three days. I was going to play a challenge tour event, but they've because the weather's been so dry here, the course has been destroyed, so they're having to oh, postpone no. it a month. Um, so yeah, I'm going to play that and then uh, maybe another one day event and then Denmark for Q school for me. So perfect, man. Let, let's get you prepped. This will be fun. Perfect. Help. No, great, mate. That's brilliant. I look You're forward to that stuff. And then I'll uh, I'll get some practice in and we'll I'll, I'll share this with uh, with some people as well. You're the man. Thanks, buddy. Anything awesome, you need, mate. Cheers, buddy. Mate. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye.